What's up guys? Welcome to the video. So today is an extension of this little mini series that we're doing for EFMP and how we got to move out of our previous military base uh, two years earlier than what was expected. We are going to be talking about the pros and cons in general but also our personal pros and cons just so that you guys have like a good understanding of of this whole situation <laughs> if you guys didn't see the first video i did check it out it'll be over here <laughs> so we're gonna start with pros so the pros well wait hold on let's talk about efmp again efmp is exceptional family member program and that is basically a military program that is offered to military families um, to assist with any special needs and a lot of people don't know about it I myself did not know about it so we are sharing our experience to help other military families that are considering this or wanting to know more about it also guys if you couldn't tell we made it safe to Texas if you guys don't follow me on Instagram do that I post a lot more like daily stuff of this whole transition so follow me on Instagram so one of the biggest pros of EFMP is the fact Liam <laughs> Li Liam's making an appearance <laughs> One of the biggest pros to this whole process is the fact that they move you to a location that will support your needs I talked about it in my previous video that um, they weren't able to support my mental health and seeking um, therapy sessions. They were able to move us to a location that has more options for me because Alaska was definitely a little too isolated and very limited in the support. That is by far the biggest pro is that they will send you to a base that can support any special needs that you and your family may need. The second pro is that you're most likely gonna get a state side assignment just because they have more. Support. I get that they're able to support any special need. That could be a con for some people. Yeah. I know we personally didn't want to leave overseas, but I was desperate. With the military, it's never like 100%, so just keep that in mind. But most of the time, they will probably send you stateside. Another pro is that you still have the ability to apply for overseas if you desire. Of course, with any military like assignment you just never know <laughs> so just keep that in mind like military is never a hundred percent but it still doesn't limit you to apply for an overseas base if you want to do that for us one of the biggest pros to this whole experience and this is just a personal pro is that we got stationed in texas which is where both of our families are when i did the application i requested randolph Air Force Base. One, because we knew the location and that was my first duty station so we kind of knew the area and it was close to family. But we didn't get picked to go to Randolph but they did send us to a joint base which is in Colleen and that's an army base but that's two and a half hours from San Antonio which is still really nice yeah. to be closer to family. Let's talk about cons and a lot of this is definitely through our experience because every case is different, okay, very subjective, yep. but since we were in Alaska, that is considered an overseas base and you get cola over there. One of the biggest things that is affecting us as a con, I would say, is that I guess our pay went down moving to Texas. So in Alaska, we were getting what, $800? Around that. It's, it's, it stands for cost of living allowance. Yeah. So it's to help. Based with, on the location. Right. And now here in Texas, we won't have those $800. So technically we are seeing a lower check. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Liam? Did oh. it, is he choking? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Did he eat the ball? The good thing in Texas is that everything is cheaper here, so cost of living is, a com like they're accommodating to the cost of living in Texas, which is, hopefully we'll be fine. We'll yeah. see. Okay. <laughs> Pro tip though, make sure you always plan based on your base pay. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Because yeah. that won't change Unless as much. Unless the rink, right? It's based right. on your rink, so. So hopefully it goes up and not down. <laughs> Another con would be you may not get the base that you requested. So again, like in our case, we did not get Randolph. We ended up getting um, Fort Hood. Again, let me emphasize the military is never 100%. So yeah. no matter what base that you want and desire, you may or may not get it. I feel like one of the reasons that we got Texas in general was because of Lalo's job. So a big con to consider is what your job is in the military. Depends on your career field, so you kind of know what bases you can go and which ones you can. Being that I'm um, human resources, we pretty much mm -hmm. can go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Lalo's career and his job and what he does can be done at any military base. So essentially, we have options. Yeah. If you have a very specific job in the military, that only a few bases need you, well, you're looking at just those few bases as options. Another pro con, if it just really depends for you, but Lalo, we were supposed to do four years in Alaska. We moved out a year and nine months early from Alaska, which means technically we'll have two years <laughs> left in my contract. We'll have two years left. And, you know, us moving out here doesn't really mean that we will be here for two years. It's like the length really is subjective. Yeah. So that's something to think about. <laughs> Again, this is another con, maybe pro. Depending on your situation. Yeah, depends <clears throat> on your situation. But for us, it was both. So I put this in a con because you do have to out process really quick. They gave us three weeks to out process, pack up our things, ship them, ship our car, um, you know, basically finish our time in Alaska in three weeks. And that is kind of stressful. Lots of logistics go into that. And again, it could be a con because it's, it's a rather quick move. But it's also a good thing. If you're really Best needing point. to get out of that specific base, it's ideal to move as quickly as possible. And that is the whole purpose of this program is that they really want to help you and they want to move you out as quickly as possible. There's a saying that if once you go stateside, you won't go overseas. Something that we hear in the military, you know, a little gossip here and there. Again, we don't know how true it is and I emphasize again that the military is never 100%. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, you still have the ability to apply for overseas bases. You still have that chance to get picked up to go overseas again. That could be a big con, especially if you guys are like us, that we really enjoyed our time overseas. Like overseas, overseas, not Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> Alaska is a whole different breed. Ay, vienes yeah. otra vez. Yeah. No, te vivo mitad. <laughs> Something that my therapist did mention is that this whole EFMP and me being the one requesting um, special assistance or special help, you know, therapy, they this stays on my record for five years. Or I could withdraw from this program, right? Right, but you have to go through... You know, there's a the process. Medical, yeah. There's a process to withdraw, but essentially it stays five years on your record, and then you can essentially get the Q code off your record. It obviously opens up more options. It's kind of like a restart. I don't know, to be honest, but that's what was told to me. I think that's like an interesting thing to think about: is that how long will this EFMP uh, record, this Q code, uh, last? How long it lasts? One of the biggest cons that is affecting us today and uh, during this whole process is that back in Alaska when we shipped our car, we still had two weeks before we actually flew out. Luckily, we had some really good friends, so if you're watching this video, thank you so much, um, that lent us their vehicle for those remaining like two weeks. So without their help, we would have been carless and that would have been really difficult to continue this whole process. Um, especially in a base like Eilson that you have to have a car. 
I mean, you can't just walk because one, it's really cold, like the just the climate out there is not ideal conditions. That being said, that means that we're carless when we get here <laughs> and homeless. Lalo and I at the moment, we have family, which has been helping us out and we've been staying with them until we get situated, but not everyone has that. So a lot of the time you have to have a hotel lined up, um, you know, rent a car. These are all expenses that you know, could potentially come out of pocket, but they do give you a dislocation allowance that for us was about $2,000 based on your rank, but for us it was $2,000. And so that's kind of helping alleviate some of those transition costs. But again, we all know how life is and typically go over that, you know, when you have a family and you're in transit. That's it guys, that's kind of what we have. Um, I'll be continuing to vlog this whole transition period and if you guys have any more questions about the EFMP I would be glad to continue this little mini series. I will have a whole playlist on EFMP move so you guys can check out the whole videos that I film on this topic but definitely be looking forward to all of these small little hiccups that come along the way as a military family and how we're kind of navigating this whole situation. Thanks for the support. I know. Thank you guys so much for always being so supportive and like supporting everything that we do and the content that we put out. We really appreciate you guys and I'm so excited to start this next chapter. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm happier here. <laughs> the sun, the normal day and night cycles, the, just the warm weather, being outside more. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like this video and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!